So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Ramon Gadarab. Yeah, you should you want to write. <laughs> and yeah, I am PhD student at uh, Virginia Tech, and uh, my work is focused on um, the high frequency uh, lunar magnetic design. And uh, in this work, we're uh, focusing on the data center power supply design. So today, we're going to talk about um, low profile, high efficiency. This is 6 kilowatt. This is a 400 volt to 48 volt three phase LLC with integrated planar magnetics. So basically, start with a state of the art server power supply. It has two stages. The first one is the BFC, AC to 400 volt followed by the DC-DC converter, which is 448 volt power supply. So our work today will be focused on this uh, DC-DC converter, the 400 to 48 volt power supply. But first, when we take a look at the silicon-based design for the uh, server power supply. So we're looking into, we have the BFC and dc stage. So the, because of the silicon design running at a lower frequency, so all the magnetics have been done using the leads wire which is very bulky and uh, cannot achieve a good density or like um, uh, efficiency. So basically this uh, set of art design has reached its like maturity level. So for example, if you want to trade off between efficiency, density, EMI performance, cost, and the manufacturability, so you have to do something to gain another thing. And um, our target today is how we like try to provide like a more um, like better design to have like solve most of the issues or the trade-off designs to have a good like uh, power density, achieving high density. And also we're looking into the cost by making this solution fully automated, which is good for, for manufacturability. And uh, of course we're targeting this very high efficiency 99 for the DCD stage and also a very low profile uh, solution. We're talking about like smart, sm smartphone thickness profile. So first we'll go our like, we did several generations for the data center uh, DC-DC converter. So we start with our uh, first generation, the three kilowatt. Uh, so for this one, we, um, this is a wide band gap based uh, design. So for the DC-DC converter, we pushed the frequency from like 100 kilohertz up to 500 kilohertz. And by pushing for high frequency, we were able to design all the magnetics instead of using the LED wire. We put all the magnetics into the PCB here, the printed circuit board. As you see here, uh, this is a prototype. So this makes the design like can achieve high density, low profile, and also it's a fully automated. So there's no labor intensive work done here. And this can reflect on the cost. So this basically, we are moving from like the labor intensive cost to the fully automated solutions. So as we said, this is like compared to state of art solutions, we are talking about five times smaller size. And this is all coming from high frequency wideband gap devices and the planar magnetic uh, design. Uh, and uh, however here for this work, we still were uh, like looking into the three kilowatt. And then we wanted to take this one step ahead because as we know, like the power consumption for data center is increasing very rapidly, is like exponentially increasing over the time. And um, as, uh, as we know, like data center consumption of energy is like very high. So if we're looking into 1% efficiency higher, this will result in a very huge uh, energy uh, like saving. So here we're looking um, also not only from like the uh, like the power consumption and the density, but also working from the EMI performance. So basically, we know uh, like for this high frequency operation, we work for high frequency, uh, and we use like a BCB based magnetics, the planar magnetics. So the planar magnetics introduce very large interwinding capacitance, which is like capacitive coupling between the winding from primary to secondary sides. So this will generate like a pass for the noise, CM current noise by, uh, from the noise source on the primary side. So this current will go flow through the capacitive coupling to the secondary side and come back to the primary. And to solve these uh, issues coming uh, from the high frequency and the planar magnetics, we propose to use some shielding layers. So basically, 
our first try was just a four layer PCB board to build the three kilowatt prototype. But if we want to like further improve the MI, we propose to add additional two layers. So in total, it's a six layer PCB board. So basically these two layers are inserted between primary and secondary. And these layers are connected to the primary ground. So this layer actually will, will block the same current from moving from the primary to the secondary. So instead now, it detoured to the shielding layers and go back to the primary side. So these layers for the shielding was very effective. It can reduce the EMI around 29 to 22 dB from low frequency, like the switching frequency, up to almost 50 megahertz. So this can prove how effective is shielding for a wide range of uh, uh, frequency in the CM current. And then we wanted to take this uh, three kilowatt uh, concept and extend to beyond 60 kilowatt. So basically by extending to higher than like uh, six kilowatt and higher. So we are looking here, not like just to barrel some DC DC converters and taking more space. But actually, we are looking into fitting the six kilowatt in the same footprint of a three kilowatt. So we are, we're looking into doubling the, uh, the power density, but at the same time, we're keeping the same or even a little bit higher efficiency. So to do that, we started like looking into different topological uh, topologies. So moving from a single phase LLC resonant converter instead of barreling some converters, and instead we use a three phase system. So three phase system can like uh, provide us with more additional benefits. So this helps to reduce the, uh, the loss, help to reduce the size as we will see later. So we want to take advantage of this three phase system into our uh, design. One of the um, important uh, like benefits for three phase system is the integration. So three phase system has some flux cancellation due to the 120 phase shift between the three phase. So this can reflect on the magnetic design. So if we have like three EI cores and we integrate them into one core, so using a three phase system, so this will reflect on the size, reflect on the loss, as we'll see in the next slide. But integrating them into one core also give us some opportunity to like control some inductances inside the, this planar magnetic. So we can control the transformer magnetizing inductance we can also even create some additional resonance, serious resonance inductance to help for the regulation of the output voltage. We have a narrow output voltage regulation here for this OCP version three is a 48 volt to 51, but we also have the double, uh, we have the whole top time requirement. So we need some regulation for the output voltage. So this three phase system when integrated together, we give us the opportunity to have more controllability on the uh, required magnetizing inductance and resonant inductance. So this is from the inductance point of view. So right now we can build like one transformer and one inductance in one leg. So each leg of this uh, six transformer architecture here, so each leg represents one transformer, one inductance integrated into one leg. And compared to uh, three single phase in parallel, so three phase can basically have uh, like uh, like 23 percent reduction in the in the loss and another 20 percent less in the uh, footprint. And uh, this is actually is already like 30 percent less loss compared to the single phase. So basically, we're getting like 30 percent less reduction in the loss from compared to the single phase. And by integrating the three phase together, we're getting additional 25% reduction in the loss and 20% 20, 20 reduction in the footprint. So the same shielding we uh, proposed for the single phase can be also applied to a three phase system. We have the four layer port with the additional layers, two layers here for shielding. So can provide uh, insulation or shielding for the same current. And uh, this current now is just going through shielding and coming back. But this is not the only benefit here. So compared to the three phase with a single phase, so basically for three phase, we have three noise source. And these three noise force, noise source are actually 120 phase shift. And when we add them together as the same current, 
So if you put like the Fourier expansion, so you will get rid of most of the high frequency harmonics except the third order. We uh, three phase cannot cancel the third order harmonics. So basically, this will reflect also on the CM current uh, of the single phase compared to the three phase as shown here. So basically, these two uh, prototypes, they have shielding. However, three phase show even 20 dB reduction compared to uh, the single phase, which is a benefit at no cost. So we basically just get it from three phase system. And then here we get to our um, six to nine kilowatt prototype. This is the hardware we built. So this one, we uh, have six transformers, six inductors are integrated here. So this is a magnetic part. You can see this is the core shape. We have six leg. Each leg represents one transformer, one inductor. And we use a GAN device, 600 volt GAN device on primary side. And we use 800 volt GAN device on the secondary side. So the dimension of this board is like 113 millimeter by uh, 101 millimeter. And if we have the thickness of nine millimeter for this board, so we are talking about 1000 watt per cubic inch as a power density, which, which already like around five to seven times higher than state of art uh, power density. So this board we're uh, able to achieve around 99.1 peak efficiency, which is uh, uh, almost uh, like, um, like, uh, like we're talking about 0.1, 0.2% higher than the best practice. So like this one with this efficiency at this power density, so this can fit in the same size of like uh, three kilowatt, but with even higher efficiency and higher power. And for this design, for this prototype, we don't have any like using of heat sink to cool down the devices or the board. We rely on the PCB to get rid of all the heat from the winding from the devices. That's why we can achieve a nine millimeter like thickness. So here we want to summarize what is the influence of using PCB based magnetics on power supply design. So on the left here, we have a state of art solution. So this is also using a three phase LC design. So this is a three phase transformer using the LEDs wire. And this is a three phase inductor uh, also using three, uh, LEDs wire. So this is a design is about three to 4.5 kilowatt design. It can achieve around 99 big efficiency for this DC DC stage we're talking about here in this area. And the uh, power density is around 300 to 400 watt per cubic inch. Uh, and this was our proposed design, uh, proposed uh, prototype. So this is almost the same size as like the smartphone. If you compare it to iPhone 13 Pro Max, we're talking about almost the same footprint and uh, around one, one and a half milli millimeter thickness higher. So it just like fit in your hand, this uh, prototype can deliver between six to nine kilowatt. And compared to state of art, we uh, were able to improve every aspect of the design trade-off. So we have almost higher efficiency, around 0.1.2% higher. We're talking about three, four times higher density. And uh, EMI, we have shielding, proposed the shielding to reduce the EMI, 20, 30 dB reduction. And we have fully automated solution. There is no labor intensive work required here. All this can be fully automated. And this is actually be a very uh, cost effective in terms of the uh, manufacturability and uh, uh, the design of this uh, board. So in summary and conclusion, we have two solutions. The first one is a three kilowatt, which um, the, like uh, the same power level of the conventional one. It's a 448 volt. This is single phase LC converter and uh, BCB based magnetics. We have also shielding for EMI and this were able to achieve 98.8 peak efficiency and 700 watt per cubic inch power density. For our next generation power supply is a three phase. This is six kilowatt, 448 volt. And uh, we have like novel topology is proposed here for the three phase system to reduce the transformer winding loss and core losses. And uh, also we have a novel, mag novel magnetic integration is proposed to get like a symmetry between the three phase. So there is no any current sharing issues between the three phases and also have a better uh, loss uh, core loss distribution and winding loss. And this prototype were able to achieve uh, like 99.1 with more than 1000 watt per cubic inch uh, power density. So that's all my presentation. If you have any 
questions, comment? I have a question. So uh, first, congratulations, congratulations. Thank you. Doctors, the holy grail of uh, power supply design. Thank so uh, my question is, uh, I think beginning you said you increased the uh, three stream frequency by five times to achieve five very high stream. High density. Yeah. Then open that couple was or associated with high switching loss because you have to charge and discharge your MOSFET also five times. And then that should have a power loss. So how do you find a balance of five times because you have efficiency increase on the inductor versus the loss on the MOSFET for switching? Oh, okay. So basically first, this is, um, uh, let's say, uh, when we increase the uh, switching frequency, we compare with the silicon. So this is a wide band gap device. So basically, first of all, it has uh, less switching loss compared to the silicon. And uh, for uh, LC resonant converter, we, we run ZBS. We don't have turn on losses. We only care about the turn off loss, the switching loss for turn off loss, which in case of the resonance converter is uh, the device turn off at the magnetizing current, which already is small current. So this is also uh, uh, reflect on uh, the switching loss. And it's choosing 500 kilohertz. So this is done by um, optimization process. So basically, uh, we have like, uh, we go through the optimization process, design, optimize, starting for optimizing how many number of transformer we need to use, uh, optimizing the footprint, the losses of the converter, and adding to this one is uh, uh, device loss. So this optimization, I, in, in these steps, actually, we sweep the switching frequency from 200 kilohertz up to one megahertz. So th that's how we should pick up the uh, 500 kilohertz. It gives us some trade-off between the, um, uh, like the switching loss and core losses, which is the uh, uh, fixed loss and related to the switching frequency, and also with the uh, conduction losses from transformer and the device loss. Okay, great. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. A second question would be, like, uh, I think you coupled, you put, like, for example, three inductors together. Uh, yeah. I expect they're going to see some cost up between inductors, because then both Here. Have have, a, have like a current uh, cost off, inductive cost off between the inductors? Would you see that be a problem because then you have to generate the noise to the noise neighbors? Like you have a one, um, one inductor charge and discharge and then it will affect the other inductors. Uh, which, which one you talk, uh, you're talking about I think, here? I think you, 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 you show a picture showing that you, you, you changed inductors from one to three. And actually I think six, maybe six, they, they coupled together. Yeah, this is the, uh, Cobbled together. Oh, you mean here? Um, here? Do you, do you see cost of your problem? Because you couple lots of inductors. Oh, OK. Uh, so basically, um, actually, uh, the coupling between the three phase and this stuff uh, is uh, minimized. Uh, here we have uh, these side legs on the sides. So let me go to uh, this one here. So basically, we have uh, this is a six leg. So each one is trans one transformer, one inductor, and one leg. But we have these side legs on the top and on the bottom. This one doesn't have any air gaps. So basically, this will decouple uh, all the six legs. So we have a weak coupling between all the six legs to make sure um, there is no like, interference between the six legs. OK, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. One very quick question, please. I, I was just wondering if you could comment on what design tools you're using, whether it's an opportunity to apply AI to optimizing this more. Uh, you mean how we calculate the Losses and uh, well, who, whose tools do you use for designing your electronic magnetic? Oh, so for this one, okay, for, for the magnetics, we use uh, ANSYS simulation, ANSYS Maxwell simulation, 3D, uh, uh, 3D simulation for the core losses and 2D simulation for the winding losses. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Very, um, very, quick very quick question. Yeah, so, what's your uh, operational input voltage range for your design? Because we have the hold up time requirement. Uh, yeah, so basically, oh, here. So basically, the input is 400, but we allow the input to drop up to 300. So we, yes, yeah, 300 font. So we have around uh, 1.3, 1.25 peak gain, uh, like for the hold up time. But during, you know, for the hold up time, we like don't care about the efficiency, just some, it's not the operation, uh, normal operation mode. Okay, 